today. Thank you for working that up. And uh, who was at the choral session this morning? Is anybody there? Okay, there's a couple of people heard. I played another one of these with uh, a different pianist this morning, and so it's just been fun to have uh, have some forehand fun. Uh, this is the book we were playing from, Folk Hymns for Four Hands. Uh, it's my most recent forehand book. I've got several out, and um, I love writing for four hands. It's just, it's so much fun to play with someone. You know, you have a friend you can play with, and it develops your musicality. You have to learn to balance your melody, your accompaniments, and all that. And it's really kind of like playing with an orchestra. Uh, so this book has um, six pieces, and they're all folk songs from somewhere or other, like The Mortal Invisible is a Welsh folk song. I, have, I heard the voice of Jesus say, uh, which um, the King's Fold melody, which Ray Fawn Williams really liked. Uh, we Are Marching to See a Hamba, it's an African folk song. Uh, there's a medley of a couple of Swedish folk song tunes, Children of the Heavenly Father, with another lesser known song called My Holy Wings, Our Savior. And then uh, one called I'm a Rolling, which is a spiritual, and it also has the song This World Is Not My Home mixed up in it. And then The Morning Trumpet, which is another uh, early American uh, kind of spiritual slash folk song. And uh, those are fun to play. Yeah, but there are other ones. There's, um, uh, oh, I even have, there's one for weddings. If you ever want to do something different for a wedding, I have a forehand book of preludes, all the traditional preludes and poses and stuff arranged for four hands. In case somebody doesn't have enough money for a, you know, for a place with an organ, they can beef up the piano part. Uh, so anyway, so that's the newest one, and that is available wherever toys are sold. That's easy to say. Where I can't be Anybody else just watch Captain Kane? I'm the member. I'm a member of the Captain Kangaroo Facebook group. And there's a guy who has. He's like a Captain Kangaroo nut, and he posts all these video clips. There not, aren't many video clips, pictures of toys and books and stuff. I do all the time. They shouldn't let me talk in public. So I wanted, they wanted another Christmas book. I said, well, I've done a lot of Christmas books. So I thought I'd do it differently. And I've got a, uh, an electronic keyboard at home hooked up to uh, Pro Tools, this is a computer uh, program to record. And I said, I'm just going to improvise. Because usually how we piano arrangers do these arrangements is we'll sit down and start you know, playing. I'm going to take a hand and say, let's start playing and see if we come up with a good idea. If you get a good idea, you stop write down the good idea, then you go back and then see what happens next and you write that down. So it's kind of like those those stories they used to have where you could come to the end of a page and say like, if you want this to happen, go to page 31 if you want this. So I never know, like, what would have happened if I hadn't stopped you know, to write down the first idea? Would the rest of this piece have turned out the same as it eventually did? So it's just one of those philosophical things. So I decided I was just going to improvise a book. So I picked the carols that I wanted to do, and I just sat down, and I would doodle around until I had an idea that I liked, and then I'd just start recording. And uh, and then when, when the piece was done, I could go back, fix any of the obvious mistakes. But I really didn't do a lot of changes, so this is a very improvisatory book. And I, I really I enjoy it a lot, because it's just different from the usual. Uh, so I, I have, I have my, my copies in, in here all nicely uh, ready to play. Um, first carol is 
the snow lay on the ground, which is one that comes from England. And it, um, I didn't really know it until I was, you know, already grown up. But I think John Winter probably has done an arrangement of it. It's just kind of finally sort of made its way over here after it had been sunk for centuries in England. But this just started out as a little improv and then uh, grew into an arrangement. So I'll play the, play the whole thing.
like the piece of Christmas. It's not a difficult book. Um, it's just, you know, I just wrote it in a different way than I usually write. And uh, by the way, I just recorded a, a CD, but it will also be available online eventually, uh, called Hymns in the Stillness. It should be coming out sometime next month. But it's a similar thing where I just took 12 familiar old hymns that were just, there's quiet songs, and I just sat and improvised, did a little cleanup work on that. So somehow or other, that word will maybe get around if you, if you like that kind of thing. Just some quietness. successful series. And Mark Cavanis, who's the uh, editor, publisher of the Milate, said, you know, we're sitting on a gold mine here. Mark has written all these arrangements, but they're in vocal books. Why can't they be piano arrangements? So he went to Mark and said, how about you know taking your book of Christmas vocal songs and turning it into a piano book? Which Mark says, hey, that the work is said done already, I just need to fix it up and we have a new book. But it's never been a piano book before, so this is a new book as far as you and I are concerned. Um, some of these are medleys, uh, some of them are rather challenging, but you're used to that if you play Mark's books. Um, so we're going to start out with Don't Tell Out of the Mountain. People like Mark's jazzy arrangements, and this is one of those. sample of the beginning.
I remember um, when I was like in high school, college, listening to uh, a pianist named John Innes. Some of you may know him. Yeah. He lived near me up in Chicago. And I used to love listening to him. He was the most elegant player, and he had these great chords. And I, and I, there was one chord he would use all the time. Uh, I was like, um, Because my ear training wasn't good enough at that time to figure out the notes. So I went out and I bought a book of John Ennis' piano arrangements and I played through the whole book and I finally got to an arrangement that had that chord in it. And then once I, once I figured out what it was, then I could, oh, now I can play that in this key and this key and steal it away from John Ennis. So, so that's one reason why I like to uh, play books by like Mark or Mary Ann, but they use interesting harmonies and, you know, no matter how old we are, we can still keep adding to our musical vocabularies by trying a different style, or, or I mean, even if you don't improvise yourself or write your own stuff, just learning these chords, you know, maybe someday you'll sneak one in when you're accompanying a soloist and get a cooler chord for your music and have the soloist go, you know, that love you that. And I hope it'll be for the right reason. <laughs> um, okay, here's another one. Let all mortal flesh keep silent. This is one of the medleys. Uh, it starts out with that ancient uh, carol, and then uh, we eventually get into Silent Night at the very end of the Father's Love Begotten. So we'll start with uh, the beginning of this. It's very lush, there's a lot of stuff going on in the inner voices, but you need to learn to use your thumbs independently from the rest of your hand to bring out an inner melody.
the arrangements in here, some of them are on the long side, so you might not want to use it as an operatory, unless the ushers want to go around for another <laughs> I actually heard of a church that did that, they locked the doors. They said, we're going to keep passing the offering around until we get X number of dollars. <laughs> and then we'll just keep playing, you know, the organist will keep playing until, so anyway. So some of these are a little bit long for preludes, but they're great, I mean for operatories, great for preludes or for, um, or special numbers, just such lovely uh, words in here. I had a run there where I ran out of fingers, that's why I always keep a pencil so I can write it, thumb goes here, you know, so I don't run out of fingers the next time I play that run. Um, Jay Ross, are you familiar with Jay's name? He's, you know, he's known a lot for his choral writing. He's written hundreds and hundreds of choral anthems and cantatas, and but some really nice piano books too. And he has, he just has a real fresh contemporary approach to things. And I, uh, I enjoy his playing, I enjoy the sound of his pieces. This was another book I was playing through. My wife said, oh, is that nice? Did you write that? No, Jay Rouse wrote that. So, uh, Angels, we have heard on high. You got that one there. Um, this one is low as a book. Okay, it's written in 6-4, which is a signature we don't see too often. Um, and if you notice there, there's lots of ties. The left hand doesn't always play on the, on the second big beat of the measure. And so when I first sat down for this, I just sat down for the first measure and said, what is this rhythm? You know, because I didn't want to just kind of fudge my way through the whole first page and not the other right. So, so just spend some time with a difficult thing like that.
okay? It's just a, the light is playing through those, and you, you'll get a little click going in your head. So you, then everything else just kind of locks to that. Uh, some really interesting harmonies kind of pop in and out, and I go, ooh, that was a nice chord, you know? So uh, here's what child is this. You have a list of the other ones on your, on your sheet, right? So here's um, what child. series at Lorenz called the uh, Hymn Writer Series or something like that. We have five books, each focused on a famous hymn writer. Some of them were lyric writers like Wesley and Watts. Mary McDonald did a Fanny Crosby book. Mark Hayes did a Philip Bliss book that songs like It Is Will of My Soul. And, uh, and then I did one of uh, Robert Lowry's hymns. And uh, I wanted to keep going, but the problem was there aren't all that many hymn writers whose names instantly resonate with the average church -goer. So this, my working title for this book was William Batchelder Bradbury's Greatest Hits. <laughs> but how many copies of that do you think people would have bought? So I disguised it. Um, William Bradbury, you may recognize that name, read if you're a critical nerd like I am, sit in church and look at, look at the lyrics to that one. I remember when I was a kid when I 
trying to figure out that the left is the lyrics, you know, and the right is music. Oh, well, yeah, that's what the lyrics are. Well, Bradbury, nobody knows his name, very few, but everybody knows his songs. So if you look at the list of songs in this book, Jesus Loves Me, you know that one? Solid Rock, Sweet Hour of Prayer, Savior Like a Shepherd, Old for a Heart to Praise My God. These are songs that are in thousands of hymnals, but for old Bradbury, he was a really good musician, and he caught the attention of Lowell Mason, and that's another name that you should recognize from American church history, church music history. He was one of the first ones that really did his best to make American church music solid and respectable. I uh, even kind of wild and wacky before that. Uh, he taught Bradbury, and he helped Bradbury get some jobs. He helped get a job in New York. But Bradbury wanted to wanted to study and become a really solid musician. So he went to England, and then he went to Germany to a little town called Leipzig, who you may remember that's where old JSP was from. But two weeks after he got there, and of course he didn't go there to study with Mendelssohn, but Mendelssohn was there. Mendelssohn died. Granbury was at Mendelssohn's funeral. So that's your little trivia thing for today. The guy who wrote Jesus Loves Me was at Felix Mendelssohn's funeral. Um, so he studied over there, then he came back and he, he continued to have church shops. He and his brother started the piano making firm. I mean, it's a really interesting American story of this brand. But uh, anyway, so I wanted to do a book of his pieces, but I had to disguise it. So this is its disguise. Uh, and I've, I've got another one now that, that's already in the, in the pipeline, but it's. Uh, Five songs by James McGranahan and five songs by William Howard Dome. Now those are other, other names that you, you can go, huh? McGranahan? Well, look at them up in the back of your info in the author index. And then, uh, or go to hymnary.com, hymnary.org. You know that one, hymnary.org? Yeah. I spent a lot of time there looking for uh, looking for stuff and finding things. Um, but wonderful, wonderful song. But anyway, that will be out next year. So Joel Rainey will have to play that one right here. <clears throat> All right, so I gotta play these now. Here's Sweet Hour of Prayer. I did this in kind of a gospel setting. <laughs>
have a played out of one of Mark's previous intermediate piano tours. These have been Mark's most successful books. The first one, I can't even remember how many thousands of copies that have sold. Uh, but he's done a number of sequels, Praise and Worship, Spirituals, Christmas. Now Mark's idea of who an intermediate pianist is is a little bit different than my idea of what an intermediate pianist is. Like that book I just played out of that Bradbury book, I would say that's intermediate. But um, these books, are, they can be challenging, but you know, Mark was trying to keep the level down. Anyway, what they've done is this is a sample of it. And so if you already have, I'm, I'm going to you know, maybe lose a sale here, but if you already have a few of these, you probably have most of what's in this book. But if this book is, is, is new to you, maybe you just have one of the books or none of the books, this is a great introduction because they take a piece from a number of these books and put them together. So. Uh, we have um, Amazing Grace, Holy, 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 Give Me Jesus, Amen. There, there aren't any, um, there aren't any Christmas pieces in here. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were saying that before. Um, so, uh, so this is kind of a general book, and there are a lot of different styles in it, but you know, we're going to, um, we're going to play a couple bits from this little light of mine, uh, which Mark gets to uh, show off his gospel kind of chops. But, you know, this is another thing. Learn a few interesting new licks, you know. Uh, we'll see how Mark can hold them down.
Thank you all for coming. Thanks to Stan so much for all of your sets. They're great. 